Welcome to the hub of analytics education. Preparing students for the future, millions of records at a time. The hub of analytics education is located in Boston, Massachusetts. My name is Charlie Bay Malden, one of the co-founders of the hub of analytics education. The objectives for today's video are sorting and indexing a data table as well as filtering that data table. The business intelligence tool that we're using today is IDEA from Caseware Analytics. IDEA is predominantly used by internal and external auditors. You'll also need to get the sales data file from the Hub of Analytics Education. Once you have your license and the sales file, let's get started. All right, we're back here in IDEA, and this is where we left off at the end of the importing data into IDEA. And we've got the December 31st sales file open. Now, if you don't have the sales file open, make sure you go back and look at that video and bring in the sales file. Today, we're talking about sorting, indexing, and filtering with IDEA. Now, sorting and indexing are two different methods for sequentially ordering data in tables. Now, ordering data in tables can be a very useful analytical operation all by itself. But because computers process files in sequence, obviously starting with the first record, sequ sequentially ordering the data is a prerequisite for some analytical tests and other operations in IDEA. And so while uh, some IDEA tests and operations may not require ordered data, but they do execute much more quickly if the data is first sorted or indexed. And multiple table operations such as joining tables or creating a virtual relational database may require key fields to be sorted or indexed first. So you can sort in, we'll start with sorting. You can sort records into ascending or descending sequential order and you output the results to a new physically reordered idea table. Now, ordering in, in ordering uh, you know basically outputting to an idea table, including all the fields from the active table, even though all you only output one, you have to keep everything in there. And that's the only option that you really do have. So let's see if we can do this. So we're going to go up here, we're under data and we see sort. So we're going to hit sort and we want to sort on inventory ID. Okay, so we want to sort on inventory ID. Okay, and we're going to call this December sales sorted. Okay, so we're going to sort on, on the inventory ID. Now we can add more, we can also change the direction. If we want to change it to descending, we can do that. But we want to keep it ascending. We can add another field if we wanted to. So say we wanted to add uh, sales date or something like that, we can do that as well. Okay, In this case we're going to delete that key because I don't want that, we just want inventory ID. Now this is going to take a few minutes so we'll get back to you as soon as this is done. We hit OK. OK, we're back. That took a long time. That was over 20 minutes, close to 23, 24 minutes to do a simple sort. Now. We're running IDEA on our server here at the university. So it takes a little bit longer to do all that processing. If you have IDEA loaded on your local computer, it will probably, I hope, go much, much faster than that. The other thing that I also want to point out is down here, b before we did this sort, you would have noticed that there were 17.19 gigabytes worth of data. We've now used up, now it's down to 14.72. This December sales sorted file takes up about as much room as the original file. In fact, it should take up exactly the same amount of room. So by doing these, by doing these sorting and creating these big files, you use up a lot of space, okay? So right now we have, this is not indexed, and we have an index based on inventory ID, but we created a brand new sort file. So now, let's see if we can figure out how to index. So let's go back to the sales final, 
right? We've got no index in here. And so instead of sorting, we're going to index it. So click this on. We're going to create a new index. We're going to create inventory ID. That's going to be our field, right? We're going to create a brand new index. We're going to do it in ascending order just the same way we're going to be doing it, right? And we can go in here and we can delete, we can re-index indices, et cetera, but we're going to just create this new index and we're going to create it in sales file. Now, I'm hoping this doesn't take 23 minutes. My guess is it's not going to take as long, but we'll get back to you as soon as we're done. All right, so that took a little bit less time, still took about 20 minutes, almost exactly 20 minutes to do that. but. One of the things I want to point out is down here, when we created that whole sort table, that took up around two and a half gigs of data. By just indexing, it looks like it only took up about 0.4 gig of data. So indexing is a little bit more, it's a little bit easier uh, versus going through the process of, of creating a sort. See over here on the sort table, right now this is all physically with no index, this is all physically sorted. So this is this is the way it's always going to look. Here, I can move between the way it's physically sorted here with inventory ID, or go back to no index and go back to the original data, the original way that does the data. So it's a little bit faster. Remember, we're using the server here on campus to run IDEA. So it's not that fast, but it's. It's a little bit faster, but it's a heck of a, it uses up a heck of a lot less space overall. I'm going to add one more index in here so you can see you can move between multiple indexes. Once we get done with, once I get done with that, we'll get right back to you. Okay, we're back. So I did an index for sales dollars. And as you can see, I did it descending order. And this is a good way to just kind of check and see where your big sales are coming from. And you can see it's going, the you know, biggest day we had is $26,000 in a day. Now, the good thing about indexing is if I wanted to move from one index to the other, I just simply move from index A here or the index I, the inventory ID index, and I can move very quickly back to sales dollars. And the entire space that it took up to do this was, was not that much when you come right down to it versus looking at the entire December sales sorted file. So I'm going to free up some space here. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get, first of all, close it here. But I'm also going to uh, delete that particular file and get rid of that and, and open up some more space here for myself. All right, so let's talk a little bit about filtering. So what I want to do is I want to filter this, but I want to look at, maybe look at a specific store. Well, it's probably not a good idea to have this sitting as indexed by sales dollars. So let's go back to our inventory ID, which at least will have everything in a store order. So let's go back to inventory ID, because you can see all the stores are grouped together. And now we're going to put in a filter. And we're going to go up here to Criterion, and we're going to put in a, uh, an equation that's looking for a particular store. So I just want to look at my, my uh, activity in store 56. So I'm going to double click this, hit the equal sign, and then type in store 56. All right? I always like to validate my equation, make sure they're good. That's a valid equation. I would hope so. And we're just going to hit equals, and it's going to go through the process of filtering and only showing the items from store 56. We'll get back to you as soon as this is done. So here we finished our criterion for store 56. So we're only viewing those transactions from store 56. And as you can see down here, we're looking at the number of records out of the 12 million we've got. 158,000 records relate to store 56. So we've done some sorting today. We've done a little bit of indexing, and we've done a little bit of filtering. Thanks for watching the Hub of Analytics Education video series. The Hub of Analytics Education provides open educational resources to educators around the globe, supporting both higher education and secondary education. For more information, please visit our website at hubae.org.